and get exam three done for you guys today. Uh, so let's get started. First, we want the total speed of the boat. And a word that you will actually see uh, for speed is magnitude of the velocity. Um, so I think we're going to work on memorizing that word because we use it a lot this semester. Nobody seems to remember it. Um, so to get the magnitude, we use Pythagoras' theorem. And when we go ahead and do that, we actually end up getting 5.2 meters per second, answer D. Now, when we want to get the angle, let's be careful here. So I'm going to actually draw the shore. And uh, we'll draw the river speed, uh, which is 2.6, and the boat speed, which is 4.5, like that. So this is the angle that we actually want to calculate. Um, and that's the inverse tangent of 4.5 divided by 2.6. And when we actually do that, we will get, I can't remember the exact answer. Let me just get it calculated out here. It ends up being, yeah, 60 degrees. Right. Good deal. Now we want to figure out how long it'll take the boat to cross the river. We only need the 4.5 meters per second speed to get that. So the time, uh, we're going to use x equals v naught t plus x naught. Uh, and that's going to end up being 25 equals 4.5 times t plus 0. And when we solve for t, that ends up being uh, 5.6 meters per second. In fact, let me just double check that. Yep, that's it. Now we want to know how far downstream the boat will uh, float as it crosses the river. Um, so we're going to use this time in this right here. So we're going to use the um, x equals v uh, floating speed, or, or, or v river speed is, is, is the word I want to use, um, times time. So we're going to plug in x equals, uh, we use the other speed, which is 2.6 times 5.6. Uh, and we actually end up getting 14.4 uh, meters. So that will be that answer. So that's one, two, three, and four. Now continuing, uh, we have a target uh, T that lies flat on the ground, um, blah, blah, blah. So read the question. We want to know the horizontal speed it has to leave the roof if it's going to actually land here. So in other words, what we need to get first is the time it takes to fall. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to use Y equals one half. So first get the time. Y equals one half GT squared plus zero t, because its initial y speed is zero. This is horizontal. Just a little note there. Um, plus uh, whatever its original height is, so we don't know what that is. So we'll, it lands and it reaches a position of zero in the y direction. Um, so what that does for us is um, y naught is in fact 10. So we're going to get 10 equals 4.9 t squared. Um, I'm canceling all my negative signs. Actually, this should be negative 10 equals negative 4.9. And then we're going to get um, <coughs> for our time. We actually end up getting uh, the time equals the square root of 10 over 4.9, which ends up being 1.43 seconds. Uh, now, notice what we do here. Um, this looks like it might be the answer if you're not thinking, but we just got the time and we want the speed. So... No. And we'll always do that on the test. We're always going to include, like, the, the first, like, if it's a two part question, we're going to include the, the answer that you get for the first part as one of the choices. Um, and that's deliberate because you've got to pay attention to what you're doing. Now let's get the uh, x speed x equals v naught xt plus x naught. So we're going to get 3 equals v naught x times 1.43. And when we go ahead and do that, we actually end up getting 2.09 meters per second, answer C. Now the beauty of this is that I've saved my answer. And if you notice, in uh, question 5 and 6, we're falling from the same height. So 6 has same height as 5. So it's actually a trick question, and I can just get C, just use the answer. So use the time from 5. Ha! So I hope that helps. Great. Now, question number seven. We have a rifle aimed horizontally to target um, 30 meters away. And we want to know um, how far. So here's the, here's the situation. I get a bullet. Okay. 
and it starts off this speed. What was going to happen is as it goes through the air, I'm going to exaggerate the falling. Like if the target's here, it's going to land here, and we want to know what this distance is. So we want to know this delta y. <clears throat> so first, let's get the time. And so to do that, we're going to use um, x equals v naught x t plus x naught, and that's going to be um, 30 equals 480 times t. Um, so 480. And that's actually going to give us um, t equals 0 0.063 seconds. Now, to get the falling, so we're going to have y equals uh, 1 half times negative 9.8 times 0 0.063 squared plus a 0 in the y direction. And, and, um, and we'll just say we're just going to calculate the amount that it falls. So it'll be a negative number, which is fine. So we'll square that times it by 4.9. And when we do that, we actually end up getting, if you actually do the math, um, you're going to end up getting y equals negative 0 0.019 meters. And you're expected to be able to do this conversion to get centimeters. So meters to centimeters, you're responsible for on the exam. So I'm actually saying this for the record. So meters to centimeters, you need to convert. So figure that out. Excellent. Number eight, um, we have a bottle rocket fired at 30 degree angle with an initial velocity of 12 meters per second. What's the range? We're going to use the range equation. So that's going to be V naught squared sine of 2 theta divided by G, which is going to end up being 144 times radical 3 over 2 times 9.8. Uh, this is because I took trig. So I know trig. That's where that comes from. Uh, so we'll go ahead and plug that into our calculator. So, um, and if I have this right, I'm getting 12.73 meters for my range. Yep. So I'll double check that, um, but it looks like we get 12.73 now. Um, <clears throat> We want to actually use the same formula um, for the question number nine. So we're going to use the range formula, but now what we're going to do is we're going to get the angle. So r equals v naught squared sine of 2 theta divided by g. And a lot of you have forgotten PEMDAS, and so you need to like get back into that. So 70 equals 28 squared times the sine of 2 theta divided by 9.8. And then I'm going to go ahead and isolate um, the sine of 2 theta. So I'm going to get sine of 2 theta. Um, and that will actually end up being, when I get my number, 7.8. Sorry, 70 on the left side uh, times 9.8 on the bottom divided by 28 squared when I, when I simplify. And I'm getting sine of 2 theta equals 0 0.875. Now you've got to unsign it first. So 2 theta ends up being uh, about 61 degrees. And that means theta, when we get this, will be 30 degrees. Now, to get max height, you use the complement. So the complement, and so um, I'm going to actually have to eliminate the work here. Um, but you're going to actually uh, see that in question 10, what I'm doing. So I get theta equals 30 degrees, um, but the answer is 60 degrees right here because we use the complement. Remember this rule. Um, another, so I want to get a range, um, and two angles will give me that range. Theta and 90 minus theta will give me the range. So we ended up uh, solving for this, and we wanted that. Um, so... For example, question 10, the answer is A, 20 degrees. So remember that the complement also gives you the same range. That was something we did in class. That's something you got to memorize. Now, um, this is another one. Uh, the angle that gives maximum range is 45 degrees. We went over that in class. And then here, some baseball questions. Let me see how we are on time. Excellent. We're very good on time. So um, what is the X component of this velocity? Zero when we throw a baseball? Never. When is the Y component? At B. And when is the acceleration? Never.
So that takes care of 12, 13, and 14. And then one is the acceleration greatest. There's never a greatest acceleration. It's always a constant acceleration of 9, negative 9.8 meters per second squared because it's all equal to g. So that's kind of that. Now, um, here, at what point is the magnitude of the velocity greatest? Uh, there's actually, um, you know, this is interesting. Uh, so it starts off here. Um, but it's actually going to be falling at a faster speed at d. So since the x is constant, um, what that means is it's at d that we get the fastest. So that's good for those. Now, we have a plane flying uh, 75 meters per second at 25 uh, due north of west. We want to get the north and the west pointing component of the plane speed. So this is 75 meters per second. So the answer here is going to be 75 times the sine of 25 and 75 times the cosine of 25. So we're going to want to go ahead and get that now. If we do that, we're going to actually end up getting um, 67.97 meters per second for the x component and 31.69 meters per second for the north or y component. And that's it. Now here, um, we have a, gun, a projectile fire horizontally from a gun that's 45 meters above flat ground. We get a speed and we want to know the horizontal distance of the firing point the gun strikes the ground. This actually ends up being a repeat of one of the problems we've done before. So let me just draw it. We've got a bullet going this way. Um, we've got a V naught X of 250 meters per second, and we're 45 meters above the ground. So let's first get the time to fall. Um, so we're going to get that by using 45 equals negative one half times 9.8. Sorry, one half. To, yeah, one half. You know what? I'm just going to set this up again because I'm just jabbering. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to use our formula, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to say we land at 0, and that equals um, negative 1 half times 9.8 uh, times t squared um, plus 0 plus 45. So when we actually do this math, we're going to end up getting that the time is about equal to 3 seconds. So when we want to get the horizontal distance, we're going to get v naught x uh, times t equals x. So we're going to get 250 times 3, which is going to be about 750 meters. I think with all the rounding and things, you might have got something like 757 meters. That works too. Okay. Now, <clears throat> um, we want to know the speed of the bolt before it hits the ground and the angle it makes with the horizontal. So let's get that speed. So vy is going to be vy squared equals v naught. Actually, let's do it this way. Vy equals negative gt plus Vy naught. So we're going to have Vy equals negative 9.8 times 3. Excellent. So um, when we do that, we're going to get um, about, I'm going to round here, about negative 30 meters per second. So we have this thing going 250 this way and 30 that way. And the angle that we want to get is this. So when I do my trig, that's going to be the inverse tangent of um, 30 over 250. Um, so I'm going to get that number. And I actually end up getting 6.84 degrees. And when I want to get the magnitude of the speed, um, that's going to be the length of the hypotenuse, 30 squared plus 250 squared, all under a square root. And when I do that math, I actually end up getting, it's going to be fairly close to 250. Um, yeah, it ends up being 251.7 meters per second. Excellent. Let's see where we are for time. So we've got, a couple, we've got about a minute left. Um, so I'm actually going to have to do this in the next video because I just don't want to go too long here. Um, but real quick, you're going to use the y equation, which is v naught squared sine uh, squared theta over 2g. Um, and then for the hang time, we're going to get 2 v naught sine theta over g. And then for the range, uh, you're going to get range is v naught squared sine of 2 theta all divided by g. And I'll actually put the answers on the formula sheet or on this uploaded PDF file so you can check it there.